I think this is probably true for a lot of skaters is that like during high school years and stuff, I was such a fucking skate rat that I didn't talk to any girls or like do anything but skate. I had no social life and I had no anything else. You get a little bit established in skating and then and then you get a taste of these things and yeah, it's rad. Like you kind of lose the plot a little bit. I lost the plot. His skating was a little more raw. He could do frontside airs, he could skate pools, he could board slide double kink rails. It had more of a like stylish rawness to it, like a really well-rounded street skater. He kind of like really spread out. I met Spanky in probably 2001. I was skating with Paul a lot and Mikey Taylor, and he was just part of that crew. They were neck and neck, and it wasn't like one was better than the other. Spanky, without a doubt, his future was extremely bright. The team at America always kind of shaped the guys coming up. I think Reagan was the one that kind of like brought those kids up and brought them to our attention and forced them on us, basically. Can't get you, oh, where am I? I'm up, down, oh. <laughs> When I first kind of saw Spanky come around, it was on America. We all lived it up in the mansion in the hills, the America mansion, and it was him, Herman, and Leo. How do you even skate with that thing, dude? Dedication. And it was kind of like they were the new upcoming young kids. Those three kids all came on tours with us. We got to get to know them really well at a young age. All he did was skate. He was just like little skate buddy. That was like his opportunity to be in this big skate video with Andrew and Ed and like all those guys that were like the top America pro names at the time. He was towards the end of the video, so he had like one of the main standout parts. Pretty like classic scenario of new kid on the team just focused on skating, really wanting to prove themselves. He was brand new. He was winning contests. He was like just this rad new skater. I think during that time, there was less people, and it was just, it was really important when somebody like that came along. You see more and more from him, and then he, you know, wins Tampa Am or something like that. Just knew, like, he's gonna do great things. When I first met him, I was kind of like, whoa, like there he is, that's, that's Spanky. Right Toy Machine and like Baker and like all these other companies probably wanted him. What's up with this kid? We want this kid. I guess Dustin told him, there, you don't have a choice, you're on Baker. Like that's just it, you know? So he just put him on. He, he's just rip, good kid. He would be at my house every day with Alex Olsen and him and He's the godfather of my daughter. He's like part of my family. Him and Brian and all the kids are somewhere between like a brother and a kid. Oh, wow. Good photo. There. Sure. Sorry, for this, Okay. I think I've been lucky over the years because Baker and America, those are companies that are like really invested into like the integrity and like passion of skateboarding. Yeah, you get older and people want like Johnny Schmo's new shoes and that's what they're gonna pay for and they want the snapback caps and whatever and then the company, they still wanna like support you because you've brought all this stuff to them over the years and so I think it's about coming together and doing as much as you could do for them and like if you wanna have that entitlement then you have to still be doing cool shit. After this is skateboarding was Baker 3 and that's like when he started partying and he would just disappear for a while out to New York. When we were working on Stay Gold, I watched his Baker 3 part and I was like, oh man, this part's great, he's killing it. But at the time it was like, everybody kind of thinking like, oh, he's slipping. I enjoyed partying with him. I think it was like Andrew or, or like Justin Regan called him up and was like, 
you need to get on a plane and come home and finish your video part. He started off really strong with Stay Gold, and we were going out every day. There was that frontside flip over the rail at Burbank Middle School. That was one thing I remember feeling like, oh, that could be his last trick, and that would be really good for his part. And yeah, he never got it. <laughs> Towards the end of the project, I would probably put a little bit of pressure on him. It's true. That's when he was partying a lot. And it was kind of like, dude, you need to chill out a little bit and try to focus. You're sitting on a great part. Let's just wrap it up. He saw everyone's potential, and I wasn't on top of my shit. And so it made it, it made it pretty hard. It's almost like in school when you're doing shit just to like get the grade. Even if he tried a trick and didn't get it, he would kind of like celebrate just for trying. <laughs> it was like, dude, it's rad. It's cool to see you out there and skating, but you didn't land the trick, so maybe you should hold off on celebrating for a little bit. Is that a make? Kevin is extremely likable. He's extremely funny and likable. Everybody wants to hang out with him. He was just being pulled in every direction, like, come hang out here, come hang out here. We're gonna do this. It didn't become more important than skating, but it just, it kind of pushed skating back. He had a shoe, he had like, you know, he was pro. He was on top of the world. So, you know, like, I feel like he kind of, you know, I think he could rationalize it. Oh, man. Aye, aye, aye. He bit that one. Oh, man. This is skateboarding. All he did was skate. This happens with a lot of skaters. They come out with a good video part. They're stoked because they get a lot of attention from it. Celebrate. Some skaters focus and get back into skating, and, and others will just continue to celebrate. Being a pro skater is weird. You kind of create your own world and your own rules. Wait, where's your older sisters at, man? <laughs> that kind of freedom, it can get out of control really quick, or it can get out of control in a very slow way. It just got to the point where he kind of just found a way to not think about it. You're letting it all out. <laughs> we were on a good one. We were drinking all day. <laughs> you guys were fucked up. <laughs> Woke up and went to some fucking cowboy bar or some shit. We get back to his house. We were both like laying on the ground and shit, fucking around, lighting each other on fire. And I just fucking lit him and this one just went Phew. That one thing right there can change someone's life. <laughs> 